Uh, this is the model RTX113 HV X-ray system. And the way the system operates is, first of all, we have a front panel. And this is an interlocked panel, which you can see right here. It's made out of a clear lead. So this is what blocks any X-ray from scattering outside the X-ray machine. And this is also a leaded vinyl. So this is all done for protection. Uh, the machine itself is also fully lead lined. So a board would be placed inside the machine. And what we have is a tray. It's a joystick positioner. And it can move approximately 14 inches by 14 inches. So when we close the door, what we can then do is power on the x-ray. It's all PC controlled. So I will click on and the x-ray comes on. I can control the x-ray voltage up top. It's an 80 kilovolt, 35 micron focal spot x-ray source. We can also control the magnification. This is 15x geometric magnification. And we can control this optically. We can reduce this to 4x. We can increase this to 50x. And then by pressing the memory button, it returns to the factory default of 15x. So to move the board, again, it's just a matter of using the motorized XY positioner. We have two speeds, a fast speed and a slower speed. And in terms of BGA inspection right now, what we're doing is we're looking for consistency in the ball size and the ball shape. In this particular package, we can see some variations. We can see the balls up top are a little bit larger as we move down. We can see some of these little dark areas or solder splashes. The most obvious defect you'll see are solder shorts, which is what you see right here. Now, with the software, we have variations of different levels of frame averaging. By clicking the 256, you can see the little blue bar. And what it's doing is it's doing 256 frames of averaging to clean up any noise. Now, what we do in terms of the BGA analysis is we can look at three things. One is we can look at the BGA ball size. And we can set a tolerance. So any ball that is whatever percentage above or below the mean the software will flag. 15% is pretty much what we use as a default. Roundness is looking for reflow. So if a ball is outside of roundness, more elliptical, that's usually an indicator it didn't reflow fully. And then you can select any percentage of voiding. So what we're going to do now is now that we've set up our tolerances, we'll do a quick inspection. And what you can see here is the software identified with a plus any ball 15% above the tolerance of the mean, minus 15% below. Here it's identified the shorts. And if we have voids, it will also identify that. We can then click and put this into an Excel spreadsheet. So it will give us the data of each individual ball. Up top, it's identified 69 balls were measured within the grid, how many passed or didn't, and how many, uh, whether it was shorts, undersized, oversized. So again, then you can download all of this data, put this into an Excel spreadsheet, and then present this to your customer. So this is a typical example, again, of what a, a short would look like. Now, there's another feature called variable angle viewing. And what this is going to do is this is going to rotate the x-ray tube itself. So as I start pressing the angle button, you can see the x-ray tube itself starts to move and I'll just reposition. And what the 45 degree viewing does is it lets us get a perspective of what's taking place. And now I will do the frame averaging. And what we can see here is there's a consistent ellipticity to the balls as it's angled. What's this telling, this is telling us that during reflow, it didn't fully reflow where it would have more of an oval egg shape. And in fact, in some of these cases, this is the pad here and this is the ball. So that's a clear non-contact. Here, for example, you can see it's actually flowing, but that's not a very good connection. So it may function, but in terms of reliability, it's probably not going to be a very reliable connection. And so now we'll go back into the, into the normal straight down perspective. Now, in terms of x-ray, what you're also doing is we looked at the voltage. Now, this particular board is a good example. It's a very, very dense metal BGA package on about a 16-layer board with a lot of copper. So we've got the thick metal BGA 
right next to a plastic BGA. And what we're going to demonstrate is how much x-ray voltage you need and what, what voltage means. So again, I'm going to look through the package at 80 kilovolts. And what we'll see is, in this case now, we're going to be looking through this plastic BGA package. I think I will make sure we're doing a straight down view. We'll go back into the live mode. Power on. And now what we can see in this particular case is we can see, again, we have good reflow in terms of the BGA itself. What we can also identify is this is the drill registration in a printed circuit board. So you can actually check to make sure that your incoming bare boards have good drill registration. Now, these little light areas are air bubbles, what we call solder voids. And so what we can do in this case is we're going to size our grid prior to doing the analysis. And then we will test this grid. And we can see again, with our analysis, we've looked for every ball that has 15% or larger voiding. And so again, when we test the grid, I can click on a single area, and here I can see this is a 13% deviation from the mean, but the void is 18%. So we can identify those voids that are outside of the specifications. Now, one of the things you'll notice too is that 80 kilovolts were penetrating the part very nicely. But when we want resolution, one of the things you find is that low power with the Glenbrook X-ray system, because of our sensitive X-ray detector, low power gives you higher resolution. So as I drop the voltage down to 40 kilovolts, you can start seeing the traces more clearly, you can see the inner die, you can see the wire bonds much more clearly. But what happens at lower x-ray power is if I move to look at the metal BGA, it doesn't have the penetration to get through the metal BGA. So high power is penetration. So in this case, when I operate back to 80 kilovolts, now you'll see it clearly penetrates this very, very thick metal BGA package to the point we can see very small voids within the package itself. So the ability to adjust the voltage is critical because if you're looking through QF bends and less dense packages, you want the ability to reduce the voltage for the resolution. If you're looking through more dense materials, you want to have the opportunity to increase the power so you can look through the parts. So again, these are the typical defects you're going to see as we've seen voids, we've seen shorts. By rotating, we were able to see insufficient reflow. You'll be able to look for inner layer related issues, dye related issues, wire bonds, QFP packages, QFN packages. So this is the RTX 113 HV system. You can see it's compact. It's very, very simple to use. It even has additional features. We can do video recording. We can do what's called a three-dimensional rendering, which is just looking at the grayscales of an image and creating a three-dimensional perspective. And this is all part of the GTI 5000 imaging processing software. So the RTX HV is a uh, very popular system for contract manufacturing, again, for the primary issues of defects as well as process indicators.